for that wonderful introduction. They had a chat with Alan on, uh, all in a day, a couple of days ago. It's always a treat to chat to him. Give him a round of applause if you don't mind. And, um, geez, what a great, this is, I'm serious, what a treat. Like, a, when this concert went on sale, it didn't come up till kind of late in the year. And, you know, I was, I was a bit worried that, you know, maybe people had their Christmas money spent or something. And, you know, and then look at this now. Sold out to the doors long and look at this. Thank you so much. So by way of clarity, we're gonna do we're doing two whole sets for you tonight. Some songs from my records and songs from the Great Big Sea catalog and Newfoundland traditional music and some surprises and some free form interpretive dance later, which is going to Just picture in Tedford in my head, one second. Um, well, I want to say a very special thanks as well uh, to uh, the uh, Ottawa Public Library Gang uh, for putting on this show. And, uh, you know, stories and songs all together is uh, dear to my heart, as you know. And I thought I'd sing what I do to sort of, you know, uh, to, to uh, illustrate the theme of the evening, I suppose, is, uh, you know, is I, I do a little reading from my, my book here, just a short thing, and, and, and tell you how it led to a song, uh, a new song that's going to be on the, the, new, the new record, the new Eleanor Beautiful Gypsies record. That we're going off, we're going off to record next week, and it's going to come out later this year, and I kind of work, all things being well. And um, just to sort of illustrate, you know, how I suppose in Newfoundland, especially, uh, songs and stories and yarns and jokes, well, they're all kind of the same thing, really. <laughs> but uh, let, me, let me read this one. Like the first 150 people or something with their library card, get us everybody else. So if you're one person, then you have 150 library cards. You get them all. For those of you from Newfoundland, that's exactly how a skeet thinks. Look it up. Um, this is the, the book. Uh, I wrote this book a couple of years ago. It's really about growing up in my little fishing town in Pity Harbor. And um, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and um, you know, really, what the greatest part about this book was sort of revisiting, uh, you know, my young life and, and, and how lucky I was uh, to be born where I was born in the family I was born in. Uh, not because we had a ton, of course, but because I thought we had a ton. And, uh, I never thought anything different about it. And growing up where I grew up was really magical place and it was like I think a lot of small towns in uh, coastal Newfoundland started changing and modernizing you know in the uh, late 80s when I was born and uh, <laughs> whatever, you know. that was getting all meaningful there for a second no but by the late uh, by the late 70s when I was uh, 10 years old. I was born in 1969, and uh, by the late 70s, most of the communities in Newfoundland, I think, were starting to modernize and had, like, <laughs> plumbing, and, uh, <laughs> and the like, and uh, most of Petty Harbor kind of did, you know, and that didn't happen until a bit later, and we didn't get cable television until after I moved out, and we, we spent, like, the early 70s with no real bathroom in the house and all that stuff, but of course, I didn't know any, I thought that was awesome, it was great, and uh, <laughs> because we had a piano. <laughs> And there was one particular story that came up uh, that I, you know, it's like one of those stories that you know your whole life, but of course I didn't think it was special of it until I told it to somebody else and they said, that's amazing. And I was like, yes, I suppose it is. And, and it really has to do with, like, my mom and dad never had a pile of money and often we'd run out of heating oil in the winter, you know, which I think for most uh, families or whatever would be a drag. But of course for us, well, I'll just read you this section. This is what it was like growing up in my family. We had an oil furnace in the basement. We frequently ran out of oil in the winter, which, of course, was cause for much celebration. <laughs> we'd stay in the kitchen, we'd all play cards, and often some of my aunts or uncles would come over for an impromptu out-of-oil party. <laughs> and after a warming drink or two, the adults would invariably start singing and playing guitar. It was on those nights that I learned that adults love it when kids sing. 
And if you do it well enough, you'll get to stay up a bit later. <laughs> you can hear the parents now going, hold your hand. <laughs> it's true, Johnny, it's true. Before bed and out of oil nights, my folks would put heavy blankets across the doorway to the kitchen. They'd take the oven door off its hinges and heat up the room by turning on the oven. <laughs> then we'd warm home-sewn blankets in the room that, and bring them upstairs at night. Those heated blankets were enough to keep us warm and fall into a cozy sleep before the real cold crept in. It all seemed more than enough to me and to all of us at that time. Somehow, on a budget of a few thousand dollars a year, my folks managed to house, clothe, and feed themselves and four kids, bringing them up in a safe house full of music and love. I'll never understand how they did it, and I'll never be able to explain to them how grateful I am that they did. And so, that's, that's a passage from the book about the out of world parties, and I, I think that was, that was one in particular when we were investigating stuff and, and promoting stuff for the book after I told that story. There was an interview and came to my mom and dad's house, and they, they, it was horrifying for me because they interviewed my mother and father, and I was made to go into the other room. <laughs> like as a kid <laughs> and well, I overheard peeking through the window you know uh, the gal asked my mother and father you know how did you guys get together you know and I was like oh my god <laughs> and my mother said now honey that's a good question <laughs> and my father said well it's pretty simple really she could play and I could sing <laughs> And so I wrote this song. It's called Somewhere in the Song. It was just a simple thing. She could play and he could sing. And when he offered her a ring, she offered him a smile. And with nothing to their names but a melody to play, they sang the cold away. And somehow, all the while, they're making something out of nothing when the winter nights were long. But come what may, they found a way somewhere in a song. Somewhere in a song And the tunes that they performed Gave them shelter from the storm And the waltzes kept them warm When the drums were all but dry And the harmonies grew strong When the children came along And somehow in a song a family survived By making something out of nothing When the winter nights were low But come what may They found a way Somewhere in a song Somewhere in a song
Don't worry, Thank you so much, everybody. That's for Tommy Jean Doyle.